Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be talking all about caviar and how this commodity became known as an expensive delicacy food item. First, for those who do not know what caviar is, it is a small, dark, shiny and slimy fish egg that is certified as a food of choice for the rich and famous. A delicacy that certainly has a reputation for having a, well, unusual taste, but some say it is one of the most delicious and precious food items on the planet. Caviar is stated to act as a symbol of luxury and carnal pleasure throughout contemporary culture, where it has been enjoyed lastingly through fame in the most upscale social circles. How did the delicacy of caviar become known? From various pieces of ancient literature, references contain insights stating that caviar could be one of the oldest delicacies in the world. Dating back to the 4th century BC, the first known record of the mystique and luxurious caviar was described by the Greek philosopher Aristotle as being heralded into banquets amongst trumpets and flowers. And apparently, Persians were the first to prepare and savour this type of roe. It would seem that the word caviar originated from the Persian designation. Over the years, the delicacy of caviar has increased in popularity among the upper class of European society. That British kings during the Middle Ages knighted this food as a royal fish, setting it aside solely for royalty. And within the North American rivers, during the 19th century, caviar was so plentiful in harvest that it would be seen thrown away as a waste product onto beaches and streets. So surprisingly, caviar has not always been the delicacy where a long time ago it was eaten by fishermen at the Caspian Sea or served in the American saloons as an appetizer. Think how usual and cheap it was then. But where does caviar actually come from? Caviar, also known as roe, comes from the unfertilized eggs of a specific fish called a sturgeon. Now all fish eggs are called roe but it is the specific fish eggs from female sturgeons that you get the real thing which is caviar. The sturgeon is a prehistoric migratory fish that has roamed the cold waters of the northern hemisphere for over 250 million years. Surviving the ice ages to meteoroids, sturgeons have been around on Earth even longer than the dinosaurs. There are 27 species of sturgeon fish all around the world. They are native to North America, specifically in the Caspian and Black Sea, but are also found in the big lakes and rivers in Europe and Asia. However, the vast majority of caviar you find in markets are stated to come from these four species, the beluga, the sterlet, the ocetra, and the sevruga. In fact, the beluga, found mostly in Russia, is known for being the highest quality and most expensive. An average weight of a female sturgeon can be up to several thousand pounds due to producing and carrying hundreds of pounds of fish eggs at a time. Did you know? The world record belongs to a beluga sturgeon that weighed around 2,520 pounds and yielding 900 pounds of roe. Moreover, sturgeons are anadromous fish, spending most of their time in salt water, but migrating upstream to spawn lay eggs in fresh water. Note, anadromous are fish that migrate up the river from the sea to spawn. These fishes possess a long period to be capable of spreading eggs. Unlike most other animals that can produce young within months, weeks, or even days, sturgeons produce young that can take years upon years. On top of that, it takes 8 to 20 years for a female sturgeon to sexually mature enough to produce eggs, depending on the species. And there is no way to tell the difference between a male and a female sturgeon until they are a few years old. Plus, even though female sturgeons produce millions of eggs at a time, chances are that only one of those eggs will actually make it into adulthood, meaning that sturgeons are vulnerable even when left in nature. These prehistoric fish are so sensitive to the temperature and cleanliness of water that even subtle changes can threaten their survival. However, conditions allowed sturgeons to thrive in their environment despite their challenging biology. This meant that wild sturgeons could be caught instead of being farmed, which made the process of harvesting caviar cheaper and easier. Nevertheless, due to a series of unfortunate events, obtaining caviar became extremely difficult. Even though wild-caught caviar has historically been the most desirable in past years, we came to notice that not many wild sturgeons are roaming in the seas anymore because of overhunting or overfishing. Caviar, becoming one of the most increasingly popular foods around the world, has introduced major depletion in the wild sturgeon population. Hence the tragic news of this group of fish being the most critically endangered species in the world making it under the red list for threatened species. 
Nearly 20 species among them are now listed as endangered, and according to the WWF, it was estimated that sturgeons have declined by 70% over the last century. This is almost entirely due to the impact of humans. Over the years, illegal poaching, pollution, and the destruction of natural watercourses have made it more difficult for sturgeons to reach their feeding and breeding grounds. Effectively, people have become excited about caviar, and the demand for it has increased as catching sturgeon had become such a convenient and profitable business at that time. Isn't it surprising to hear that we have nearly decimated the wild populations of a species that has been around for roughly 250 million years? So it's actually hard to separate the story of caviar from the tale of environmental destruction at the hands of humans. More importantly, caviar's resource-intensive harvesting has food production experts concerned about its future and sustainability. With that being said, the reason for the economic value of today's caviar is mainly because of its imperiled and rare characteristics. It wasn't until around the 20th century when these freshwater fish and their eggs became a rare commodity. For this reason, caviar produced from only this fish is mandatory to be highly expensive and it is very justifiable. Today, caviar would be worth about a half a million dollars. Being impartial to caviar, everyone can say that just a single ounce of it can cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. Hence, it is no secret that scarcity brings high-end value. Actually, there is an economic idea that explains this, called the Rarity Value Thesis, which describes how rarity increases the value of the item. An economist called Arthur Fishman wrote, This phenomenon is consistent with the Rarity Value Thesis. Demand for caviar has not declined, but increased as sturgeon has become rarer. It is a given, when there's less caviar to go around, you have to pay above the odds to get your hands on some. Having said that, the rarer that caviar becomes, the more we can't get enough of it. In the end, caviar is a high demanding food item, or people would like to call it black gold, and the sturgeon population couldn't keep up with demand, so their rare accessibility makes producing caviar become a completely intricate and lengthy procedure. And as you may know, difficult processes involving human labour, sophisticated equipment, and importing and exporting cost a huge amount of money within a luxury food scene. Therefore, these complicated methods to harvest caviar, coupled with its increasing popularity, are the fundamental factors that influence the exponential increase in caviar prices. In turn, this further developed its luxurious image and made consumers believe that caviar was a luxury good with a finite supply. Due to the long period of time and resources necessary to harvest eggs from a single sturgeon and started to feel a sense of exclusivity when purchasing caviar. Did you know? According to the Guinness World Records, the most expensive caviar in the world comes from the Iranian beluga where a single ounce of caviar costs $17,000 and nearly $35,000 per kilogram. And to be more surprised, this caviar can come with 24 karat gold fixtures when it is served. Okay, now we know that fishing wild sturgeons to obtain caviar is a no-no. What do we do? Nowadays, in order to safely secure some caviar is by sustainably farming them. In order to keep up with the pace of demand, sturgeon farms were created and today, the majority of sustainably produced caviar comes from sturgeon farms, driving the transformation of the industry into a global sturgeon farming business. It was stated that there are more than 2,000 farms in the world that harvest different species of sturgeon or caviar from prominent countries like Russia, China, Iran and America. The process of harvesting caviar from farms is lengthy and sluggish, but if it is sustainable, it gives the wild sturgeon population a chance to recover. But whether or not that happens is largely up to us. For instance, biologists are helping sturgeons return to spawn in their natural habitat, which allows for increasing sturgeon population and taking the species off the red list. And what does this mean in terms of prices? Consumer prices may likely be reduced.